Hello there, 2.6, notes, day two, continuity, continued, dealing with an unknown. So let's look at example one. Let f be the function divine, defined below, not above, where c is a constant. For what value of c, if any, is f continuous at x equals two? Well, our first item of business or order of business is to show that f of two exists. And... Uh, it, it will here, right, on that interval. So let's just go ahead and just assume that f of 2 exists. What we want to do is we want to show the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And that's all equal to f of 2. So let's go ahead and set those two sides equal. x squared sine of pi x equal to x squared plus cx minus 18. Okay, and that's all going to be true at one point. We want them equal at x equals 2. So we're going to plug in a 2. So that'd be 4 sine of 2 pi equal to 4 plus 2c minus 18. Okay, sine of 2 pi is 0, so 4 times 0 is 0. Over here, I get 2c equals, oops, not equals, minus 14. And so 14 equals 2c. Therefore, c would have to equal 7 in order for this function, this piecewise function, to be continuous. Okay, an example 2, a little bit different, but the function g of x given below is discontinuous or not continuous at one value x. Redefine the function so that it is continuous for all values of x. So the first thing I would do here anytime you see something in this form is I would factor that. So I'm gonna take um, g of x and set it equal to, looks like x minus four and x plus three, all over x plus three. Okay, so that right here tells me that there's a hole at x equals negative 3. And therefore, it's going to be discontinuous. It's going to be discontinuous at x equals negative 3. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to find out, you know, where the function would be going as it approaches that value of negative 3. So I'm going to cancel, oops, I don't want to cancel that. I want to cancel these two. And then I want to take the limits as x goes to negative 3 of what remains, right? So x minus four. What does that become? Well, that's negative three. I do direct substitution, minus four. So I get negative seven. So what I want to do here is I want to write a piecewise function. And I want to say that uh, g of x equals x squared minus, uh, minus x, whoops minus x minus 12 when x is not equal to negative 3. And right, so I've got this function that's continuous except at negative 3. And then when x equals negative 3, I want it to equal negative 7. And that fills that gap. All right, it plugs that hole that we have. And therefore, g of x would now be continuous using this piecewise function. Okay, so this third example is very interesting. Um, you, you just want to be aware here. First of all, let's read it. Uh, the function g of x given below is discontinuous at one value of x. Redefine the function so it is continuous for all values of x. Okay, so the thing that just jumps out at me is this x in the denominator. That tells me that when... Um, when x equals 0, we got a problem, right? So x cannot equal 0. That right there is um, is just kind of from experience. When you see anything divided by uh, a variable, you know that, that you've got a problem there. So basically, you know, I've determined right here, just like I did in the problem above, um, I've got an issue at x equals 0. Therefore, I'm going to look at the behavior as the function approaches zero. So I'm gonna take the limit 
as x approaches 0 of e to the uh, 1 minus 1 minus cosine of x over x Oops, over x. So properties of limits. Um, interesting how this works. Um, we're not going to the proof of this right now, but basically what I can do is I can take e to the power of two separate limits. Um, and I can write it just like this. Okay, so I'll explain in a second here after I write this. Okay, um, using properties of limits, as we've uh, looked at a couple of lessons ago, um, this right here, the limit as x goes to 0 of 1, there is no possible input for x inside here, so it's just going to remain the same. So it's going to be e to the 1 minus, and this one right here, this limit is a very important limit that we said to memorize. As x goes to 0, for 1 minus cosine x over x, we get 0. So this limit of this function as x goes to 0 equals e. Therefore, now I can go ahead and generate a continuous function and say when x is not equal to 0, I have my function, right? e to the 1 minus 1 minus cosine of x over x. And when x does equal 0, I want my function to equal e. And now we have uh, plugged the gap. We've plugged that hole right here with a value specifically assigned to when x equals 0. And now we have no discontinuities, and g of x is continuous. Okay, this last example is very similar to the first example. Uh, basically, like we had in the first example, is that we got to assume that f of 2 exists. In this case, it looks like f of 2 will equal 4 times whatever a ends up being. Uh, we want our left-hand side to equal our right-hand side when x equals 2. Okay, when x equals 2. Therefore, <clears throat> I'd go ahead and factor the, the numerator of the upper portion of that piecewise function. I go x minus, oh gosh, uh, minus 2 and x plus 5. I spaced there for a second. I shouldn't have because there is a hint in the denominator. And I want that to equal 4a when x equals 2. Now before I go anywhere, I'm just going to make this a little easier on myself and say I want x plus 5 to equal 4a when x equals 2. Uh, so if x equals 2, right, so when x equals 2, uh, it looks like I get 7 equals 4a, and therefore a has to equal 7 fourths. So when a equals 7 fourths, uh, f of x is continuous. Okay, that's the end of chapter two. Um, we'll review and then we'll take a test. Have a great day.